to the fact checker my name is Raymond Mujini and today we will talk through exactly what it is you need for the election but let's start by understanding what is this election in terms of the numbers this election will have 18.1 million voters and those 18.1 million voters will be casting their ballots at over 34,000 different polling stations in presidency particularly and parliamentary elections those are happening on Thursday, of course, that's right there on the screens. The Electoral Commission will be conducting this election in 146 different districts and in 353 constituencies. It will be broken down to sub-counties, which are 2,190, parishes, which are 10,594, and the polling sessions, which are 34,684. And, of course, the general number of voters is 18,103,000. 603 people who are going to be voting and of course to go through that I have with me Mr. Paul Wukenya you have a very huge task before <laughs> you I understand yeah. but I wanted us to just talk through an ordinary voter who's never been to the polling station mm -hmm. what does someone need to vote let's start with when is the voting well actually the first voting was today <laughs> yes. except that these are special interest group selections mm -hmm. where you have only members of the electoral college coming to a sub county and then having the elections. But to uh, talk about general elections where we can all participate, 18 mm -hmm. years and above, registered voters, mm -hmm. uh, you need to, first of all, in this case, which is a unique election, mm -hmm. prepare your mask. Yes. Don't leave your home without your mask. Mm -hmm. And then present yourself at a polling station where you're registered as a voter. Mm -hmm. um, you will be identified if you have your voter location slip very, very well. If you have mm -hmm. your national ID very, very well. Uh, if you do not have uh, any of those, we will still be able to identify you. We have a biometric voter verification machine, mm. which can read your unique fingerprints, you know, mm. and uh, uh, you are uniquely identified as Paul Bukenya. Mm. And then if uh, for uh, the, the principal document is the register. Yes. If you present yourself at a polling station where you are registered as a voter, mm. you will be uh, identified and allowed to vote. Mm. Briefly, just walk us through. At the identification of the voter, you need either a national ID, a voter slip, or to present yourself and scan your thumbprint through the biometric. Yeah, if you have those two items, then they make identification much easier because the voter location slip has mm -hmm. a quick reader, you know, it has a barcode which can be read, mm -hmm. uh, a QR code, it can be read by the machine in an instant and your information pops up, wi mm -hmm. which is very good because you now you don't even need to touch the surface mm. uh, for that matter. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you do not have that, then certainly we, we ha the numbers on your national ID, your NIN, N -I -N, mm -hmm. which can help us a lot to just punch in and we get your particulars. Mm -hmm. Because some people uh, have, uh, you a know, problem <laughs> with the problems with that, the, the, yes. the work they do, you mm -hmm. know, you, you, you work with hot things, you know, mm -hmm. the chapati guys, yes. uh, people who do salon, you find that the threads are not very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, it can become a challenge there. But yeah, those documents can help a lot. But mm -hmm. again, the voters register is full color. Your photo is there and you can be identified there. So mm -hmm. the voters register remains the, the basic document. If anything else uh, mm -hmm. gives us any, you know, challenge and it's not mm. coming out mm. then the voters register Th there's been there's been a question that many people have been asking will i be allowed if to vote if i don't have the voters location slip which the electoral commission has been issuing definitely if you present yourself at a mm. polling station where you're registered as a voter and where your particulars appear mm. on the national voters register you will be allowed to vote whether you are able to produce a, a, a voter location slip or national id or not mm. we will be able to identify you mm. Paul, the other thing that people have been discussing, pens. Should I carry my own pen wow. to the uh, polling station? They've said several <laughs> things about pens. Yes. And, uh, uh, these are, we've got pens, of course, we've procured pens for these elections. Pens made in Uganda, very good pens, good brand, nice house of plastics, mm. uh, Mulwana, our local brand. Mm. Uh, and we have enough pens at each and every polling station. Mm. But of course, like it is these days, mm. uh, just to take extra caution and... Uh, you know, you can carry a pen. It, it's, it's allowed. Mm. You can carry a pen to a polling station for health reasons, mm. not because we do not have pens or because they are defective. Mm. Just like uh, uh, Raymond, you know, these days when you're going to church, they say, well, we used to find the hymn books there, but yes. please carry your hymn book. Hymn book now, or yes. a person yeah. going to the mosque, they're told, uh, please carry your mat. Mm. It's, it's good. It's better that way. Mm. So you can carry your, your, your pen if you want, but if you don't, 
certainly we have a, a, a hygiene station at each polling station. You'll be able to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. We'll take you through safety procedures as mm -hmm. you approach the station. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Paul, the other thing I want us to talk about is eventually you are verified on the voters register. What does the electoral commission give you after you have been identified as a voter? Now when you're identified as a voter, the next thing is to give you the um, ballot paper so that you can proceed and vote mm -hmm. and make a choice of the candidate you want to Which do. Which ballot papers are people getting on Thursday? Yeah, for uh, the general elections, we are going to have a three-in-one. That means you're going to vote for the president, a directly elected member of the parliament, that's a member of parliament representing your constituency, mm -hmm. and then the district woman member of parliament. There have mm -hmm. been talk uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> on, on, on social media that uh, some They're candidates are on this days. day. <laughs> yes. I think that's, that's, that's very, very malicious and mm -hmm. damaging information that's coming out there. Mm -hmm. uh, on that day, except for a place where uh, there's been an unopposed candidate. Mm -hmm. You know, some members of parliament were uh, not unopposed, unopposed and election, some district yes. member of parliament. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you're going to find uh, the first table where you'll be issued the ballot paper for presidential. And then when you proceed to the, uh, you know, after that, you get the ballot paper, mark it, and mm -hmm. put it in the first ballot paper, ballot box, rather, mm -hmm. for presidential. Then proceed to another desk mm -hmm. where you get the ballot paper for direct elected, elected member of parliament. Mm -hmm. You mark that one in a separate basin, put in a separate box. And then the last uh, is the where you find a district woman representative to parliament. Mm -hmm. And then you'll exit the station. Mm. What is the electoral commission going to use to identify people who've already voted? In the previous elections, you used to tick off on thumbs. What is this this time round? Uh, first of all, the biometric voter verification machine mm -hmm. uh, will register you and you'll be able to vote only once. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that technology, we also mark the cuticle of your, uh, you know, thumb or any of your fingers. But the thumb, we we'll go for the mm -hmm. thumb. Mm -hmm. So that uh, um, you are not able to vote again when you present yourself, uh, uh, if you try to present yourself at another polling mm -hmm. station. Are there any scenarios where the Electoral Commission feels that they might revert to a manual voters register, the actual handheld register, or none of those scenarios has been imagined by the Electoral Commission? The, the, the register is a physical copy. Mm. Is that what you meant? The, at the polling station, we have a physical register, mm. full color register, because it's the basic document we use during voting. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, certainly, if, for example, we're given the scenario, if you present yourself at a polling station and say, hey, I was not able to collect my voter, uh, location, voter location slip, mm. and by the way, um, I, I misplaced my national ID, they mm. could even get lost on that day, or mm. someone, what if someone can grab your bag? Mm. Uh, you could still report and uh, go through the processes, the biometric voter verification machine, uh, and the voters register. The voters register is a very key document because mm. unless you are on that voters register, you cannot vote. Because mm. you could pick a slip from somewhere, someone, or pick someone's card and present yourself. Mm. If you're not on the register, definitely you'll not vote. Mm. Paul, let's get to the, the other very contentious matter, which has been, should I carry my mobile phone to the polling station? And if I carry it, what can I do with it when I'm at the polling station? I think mm. you can carry your uh, mobile phone. We've not said don't carry your mobile phone. You can mm. carry it to the polling station and you use the right words. Mm. You can carry it to the polling station. Mm. You can even go with it inside the polling station because mm. we'll not take it away from you. We've just said that you will not be able to use your uh, uh, phone <laughs> inside the polling station for purposes of recording videos or taking photos. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this is because, uh, Raymond, we want, and the law, uh, Article 68 of the Constitution, and so, you know, mm -hmm. it talks about the vote uh, the being secret, secret ballot. Uh, yeah. Secret ballot. The, the election shall be by secret ballot, and we want to keep that principle. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important in free, fair, and peaceful elections. Mm -hmm. Peaceful because no one will come and say, hey, Raymond, you are the guys who voted for Paul. Mm. Oh, you know, yes. no one will come because you, you've not displayed it. Your, mm. your vote remains anonymous throughout, mm. Mm. you know. And then, of course, uh, the other issue is that um, we do not even want a situation where you, you come into, you know, the ballot papers are securely sealed. You, you don't even know how it looks like. Mm. In a sense, you know the candidates and you know how they organize, but the, the design, everything, mm. is still kept a secret up to polling day. Mm. You come in, take a snap, share it, and someone goes, makes copies of that, mm. we'll be in trouble at that polling station in mm. that district. We'll have serious problems. Mm. But the issue is that the ballot paper, is the, the, ballot is the election is a secret ballot, and we want to keep that. And mm. uh, we do not want also to take a time, lots of time, 
in a station, but also cameras intimidate people. You know, imagine you've come with a camera and you are recording, everyone is coming around and then they start feeling uncomfortable. We work with cameras and <laughs> you know what it means. You mm. even need to ask someone before you take their photos. Mm. Uh, Paul, yeah. before we take a break, I, I want to just, to on the issue of cameras again, yeah. will cameras be allowed outside of a polling station? Yeah, sure. We guided that a camera can be used. For example, there are journalists who are going to cover polling stations. Mm. And, and there could be someone who may want to take a photo of a polling station with an observer or something like that. Mm. There's a code of conduct. There's professional conduct. Mm. We do not want someone who is just going to zoom in and show how people have, have uh, voted. voted. Mm. But eventually, uh, when we finish voting and start counting, which is public, mm. this vote, this vote is public. And then the declaration of results form is a public document. We even leave a copy at the polling station. You can take a picture of that and, uh, and mm. share it. This yeah. is how we voted at Serena polling mm. station. Will people be allowed to live stream the announcement of results at polling stations? The public activities are open to, to, to that. Th that's mm. what we guided in our mm. uh, document. But you know, the voting is, is private, it is secret, and it remains anonymous. No one should be... The principle is that the, the, the choice should never be traced to any other person. It, it's very important in, uh, mm. universally as a principle. Yeah, to keep it as a secret ballot. Let's take a very short break, but when we return, we continue with Bukenya and the questions on what should voters do on the voting day, which will be Thursday. And we are back with the fact check. Of course, the voting for presidential and parliamentary candidates is on Thursday. And we're now just basically walking through what you need to do on the D-Day. We've talked about pretty much what the voter needs to do. But now I need you to talk me through what time does the polling open? What time does it close? Well, polling at your local station will mm. open at 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Let's make sure you're there. Because we've already sent out materials to the districts, mm. ready to roll out, start moving mm. uh, to, to the sub-counties and then to the polling station. Mm. So make sure you are there at 7. Uh, by law, we cannot open a polling station unless we, we have 10 registered voters from that polling station mm. present. Present at the polling station. So please make sure you are there. It will also help to remove doubt with the mm. ballot papers. The, the kit was bought. It had the right contents. Mm. So voting starts at 7 and... Uh, it ends at 4 p.m. Mm. And they're saying that come in and vote and vote in time and so that we finish voting early enough to do the counting. Mm. Of course, by, by also our guidelines, all persons who are in the line by 4 p.m. will still be allowed to vote. To vote. Mm. Yeah, so after that, of course, we start the counting. Counting mm. is public. It's mm. done in the open involving the, the, the mm. voters what and the officials. In the before we get to the counting, what happens when the polling closes? Um, when you close the, the, the polling, um, do you break the seal of the ballot box? How do you break the seal? Do you pour out the, the votes so that you can count them? What happens exactly at that point? When voting stops or when the voting time, of course, you know, when you mm. get to that point, the presiding officer will announce that we are closing polling. Mm. We are not going to issue out any other uh, ballot paper to any person. Mm. And the constable is supposed to block off the cordoned area because mm. there is an entry to a polling station. Then after that, of course, you go through some processes uh, and uh, they include um, uh, making sure you account for the materials. But also you put down the polling materials on a polythene, you know, provided a polythene sheet that you can uh, uh, put on the ground and you pour out everything, make sure the ballot paper is empty, the ballot box is empty, and then you start counting publicly. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, after that, of course, you enter the, the figures as mm. scored by the different candidates. Mm. Talk us through what is the role of polling agents? What can polling agents do and not do on the voting day? Well, polling agents uh, uh, represent the interests of candidates. Mm. They come in to keep an eye on how things are going at their polling station. Um, has it opened on time? Is everything here as, as, as it's supposed to be? Registers, uh, the machines, the everything that's used for purposes of voting. Mm. And then also we issue agents with uh, copies of the National Voters Register so they can cross-check to see that the persons who have presented themselves are indeed voters at that polling station and that they are the right number. It helps when you're telling. Mm. And uh, they, can, they can question the... They, they tally because, you, you know, we, we, have, we have a register and whenever someone pronounces their name, we cross-check and we tick mm. it. So 
it should as much as possible speak the same language. Mm. So they represent the, the interests of the agent and during counting they can help to, you know, hold the, because you still do manual counting, mm. all the, uh, the, the papers. And uh, eventually when you're signing the declaration of results form, there's a place where they also sign and say that we, we you know, they, they have witnessed the exercise. Mm. So they are very, very important in uh, achieving a, a, a transparent electoral process. Mm. Paul, now from 6 p.m. is when the heat will start, the declaration of results. Who declares who has won what election? Now uh, uh, at your polling session, the returning officer will read the results of the election and they mm -hmm. say at, at this station, Serena polling station, Raymond Mujumi scored, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> 700 and Bukenya mm -hmm. Paul scored the 400. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an announcement. That, that those are the results. They will sign on them and send them to, to the collection center, which is the sub count, and then will be taken to the returning officer. Mm -hmm. Now the returning officer will read the results of presidential elections within that electoral district. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, declare the results of parliamentary elections, both mm -hmm. directly elected and, and uh, woman, woman a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Then they will transmit the presidential elections results to the national elections results tally center, In where the chairperson mm -hmm. by law is supposed to uh, ascertain and publish and declare uh, under the seal of the commission the results of the elections within 48 hours. Mm. So you're, you're telling us from the moment polls close, we have 48 hours to we know have who will be president hours. of yes. the country? Sure. Yes. Within the 48 hours, the, the commission must have declared the results of the elections. Mm. Yes. After the declaration of the All the, the elections, presidential, parliamentary, yeah. and local government. Uh, very yeah, yeah, yeah. Presidential and all the and parliamentary. Yes. Very finally, after the declaration of results has been done, what will happen thereafter? When you declare uh, an elected candidate, you know, someone elected, declared elected, mm. you then uh, um, go through other processes like gazetting the results and, mm. and then waiting for other, the other institutions now that come into play mm. that will receive the candidates and mm. prepare for them to, to take office mm. as provided for in the laws of Uganda. Mm. Uh, you will have the judiciary coming in at a point to, to help with administering the, the oaths and all that and the relevant agencies that are supposed to prepare, for example, swearing in mm -hmm. uh, over an elected candidate at president and at parliamentary level. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Paul, for speaking to us. We've been speaking to Paul, who speaks for the Electoral Commission. He's been talking us through what you need to do for the election on Thursday. Again, just to remind you, show up with a face mask. You can come with a pen, but that's optional. You must have your national ID. If you don't have the national ID, there will be a biometric machine there. If you have a voter location slip, you can also come with it. But again, please show up and vote on the 14th for who should be your representatives at Parliament and at the presidency. From the fact check at you, wait for the news coming up very shortly.